Hello, this is Wes Hardiger, and if you go look online for whether or not you should turn on the image stabilization within your lens when it's mounted on a tripod, you will see a plethora of answers. You will see lots and lots of people uh, with opinions. Some people say it doesn't matter, some people say it does matter, and the one thing I've noticed is that none of these people seem to be using facts. Uh, so I thought I'd do some tests, because I'm much more of a factual kind of person I want to know. Uh, will it actually matter? Will it affect my images if the image stabilization switch is on? And the theory goes something like this, that if you have the image stabilization switch on, that your lens in the image stabilization algorithm in it will go into sort of a feedback loop. And little tiny vibrations will cause the the lens to you know try and shift. And then it'll overcompensate and... In the long run, you end up with a blurry picture when you should have had a more stabilized one. So you should turn the image stabilization switch off. Other people, on the other hand, counter with the fact that, well, image stabilization algorithm should be really good. And they shouldn't have a problem and shouldn't have a feedback loop. And then the other people say, well, but they're designed for a hand, not a tripod. Well, so forget all that. The right thing to do is to test your lenses. And I'm going to do just that. I'm going to show you the results of testing two of my lenses, and then uh, we'll go shoot in the field, and then we'll come back and look at the results, and we'll see what happens. Hello, this is Wes Hardiger, and I am doing an image stabilization test. You can see my camera is mounted here. I have 70 to 200 on it. It's extended all the way out to 200. And I'm shooting at those bushes over there because they're... Um, they're detailed. You want to you want to do this with as detailed of an of a image as you can. So there's lots of little fine grasses and stuff that'll give me the a good detail. Um, a, a roof or anything else with a lot of lines would enable you to do it. And you can see that it's still recording. I'm taking a good 30 second exposure, and this is actually the second of two. Uh, it's just wrapping up now. The first one I took with the image stabilizer on, and the second one I'm taking with the image stabilizer off. And we'll compare the two and see if the if the um, the fact that the image stabilizer was on and attached to the tripod made a difference. Uh, there's a few rules for doing this. One, as I said, stare at a um, very detailed object. Uh, like that, those grass bushes over there. Two, do it on a very still night. Um, you need a good 30 second exposure, don't do anything shorter. And um, take your zoom all the way out to the maximum. I've done actually um, two tests tonight. The first one I did on my 70 to 200, and um, just before this, I also used my. Um, you can see that this is this is the the other common one. This is the 24 to 105 L. And um, I did the same thing with that. I put the image stabilizer on for the first shot, took it off for the second, and then I'll compare the two results later, comparing them at 100% zoom. Uh, that's obviously critical. You want to you want to see if there's any difference. The only way you can do that is at 100% zoom. So I'll talk to you again when I get back to my computer, and we'll pull the images out and look at them. Okay, so I'm back from the great outdoors, and I've pulled my images into Lightroom. You can see the four that I took down here, and there's two extras. I'll cover those in a minute. And the first two, uh, if you look at my metadata over here on the left, you'll see that the first two are the 24 to 105 lens. And they were the first two that I took, one with stabilization and one without. And the second two were with my 70 to 200 at f4. So what I want to do for this is compare the images side by side. So I'm going to click on the 24 to 105 image sets. I'm going to hold shift and click on both. I'm going to hit the C key for compare, which shifts us into this XY compare mode here. And the advantage of this is that this lets me look at them simultaneously. And I can scroll around them both. I can zoom in so I get one to one. Now, as I scroll around, I'm looking for any differences. The image on the left was uh, without the image stabilization and the one on the right was with the image stabilization and as you can tell there is almost no difference um, I see little tiny bits of difference but nothing you'll be able to see in a recorded video probably so pretty impressive really didn't make any difference whether the image stabilization switch on my 24 to 105 was on so that was easy. I wonder what the other lens will look like. So let's click on the other lenses. Oh my gosh. Now I see a huge difference. 
and I'm, even in a recorded video you'll be able to see the massive difference between the clarity on the right hand side which did not have the image stabilization on and the one on the left which did have image stabilization on this clearly shows that the lens was fighting the tripod for control of stability <laughs> um, for lack of a better way to put it so uh, clearly when shooting with this lens if I failed to turn it off I probably need to reshoot whatever scene it was that I was shooting so this is something that I think that everybody ought to go do and and to tell you to show you a real-world example these other two images were two that I took on a dock one day and I was shooting this pile of wood which I thought had some sort of neat textured patterns in it and I actually shot the left one the the one with the image stabilization on first and then I realized, you know what, I just blew it, I left the switch on. And fortunately in the field I realized, you know what, at, two, at 20 seconds I need to reshoot this because the image stabilization on the lens was going to mess up. My point behind this whole series of, of things that you ought to look at is not to decide yourself which one of your lenses is okay to use or not use, but rather to make sure you go test each of them. If you have image stabilization in your lens, or in your camera, either way, you ought to go try it on a tripod and see what it is. A lot of people will make claims about one way or the other without actually doing any studies. And my point behind this demonstration is that every equipment body and lens will be different. So go test yours and see how they turn out. All right, thanks very much for watching. Thank you.